you see, I knocked them down. And I hope I don't bleed to death. I might. Oh, let's take care of this one. We'll see if we actually die. Let me touch and go there. Hello friends! Now that we are deep in Alpha 20, I wanted to take a look at some character builds and how to maximize skill and gear selection for an effective character creation. This is not intended to be the mate of any builds, rather powerful combinations that work well together under a certain class. We're going to be building up to a level 20 tank build in 7 days to die, alpha 20. If you're enjoying my 7 days to die videos, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe me, maybe ring that notification bell so you get notified of my videos. Now what I'm going to be going through is just going to be a base, it's going to be an outline and I'll be explaining why I make certain choices. Depending on your game style, you know, maybe how your world is created, whether it's solo or in a group, and whether you like to play defensively or aggressively, you will have to adjust accordingly. For instance, if you like to do a lot of base building, you might want to put in the occasional point into probably advanced engineering to get that forge workbench and camp station, and of course the cement mixer, as well as getting some better resource gathering through, you know, mother load and minor 69er. If you like to loot and scavenge, then while well, lucky looter and scavenge skills are really worth considering, and so on. As you go through this, if you have any really particular powerful combinations that work well by switching out a few points here and there, why not tell us all in the comment section below. We all have a different experience and what might work well in the default game settings might work less well under say insane difficulty, hold every night and so on. So give your view on what you'd like to use and indicate why, such as what settings make it useful. Let us learn from each other. Now you saw me standing around, I don't have a lot of clothes on because I'm going to start with uh, the skills and then I'll go through some of the equipment because that sort of matches what skills we have. So let's go to the skill selection here. I am only on level 1, so I'm going to bring myself up to level 20 to give a few extra points that we can then distribute. Okay, I've now hit level 20 and I have 23 skill points. This includes the initial skill points you get from your basic White River Citizen quest where you have to make your bedroll, you have to go find the trader and stuff like that. So make sure you do that quest because that gives you four points. Really, really useful. So don't skip out on that. Now we're going to look at the first sort of 10 points that we're going to be doing here. And of course, as a tank build, we want to look at the strength attribute. So... One of the really early ones that I, I like to put personally is going to be Sexual Tyrannosaurus 1. What it does is that it reduces the stamina usage by 8 for regular melee and tool usage, but the power attacks 15%. And this is really useful because a lot of the attacks you want to do, especially if it's 1 on 1 or 1 on 2, is going to be power attacks. Hit them in the face to get that extra damage. So that's going to be the first one. Second one, and we're going to do a sledgehammer build. Sledgehammers are really good because they do awesome damage just with a regular attack and even better with a power attack. And they have some really good one further down, such as knocking down nearby foes. So the second point we're going to put into Skull Crusher 1. And that also unlocks the iron sledgehammer crafting, which is going to be key to getting some good damage here as well. Now, for the next one, I actually am going to switch to Fortitude. And why would I do something like that? Well, there's a couple of points in here, Fortitude, that I would always suggest getting. The one, Healing Factor. Healing Factor 1 gives you 1 health every 90 seconds and critical injuries heal 20% faster. This one is really good and it only costs 1 point. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to increase your Fortitude. I also like the rule one cardio because stamina region is increased by 10% when sprinting and this always helps because you're going to be running around a lot anyway. So I these are two I, I love to take. I will sometimes, you know, you could go for pain tolerance instead of the cardio and you get less HP loss and less chance to be stunned. This one is also really powerful. Then we're going to be switching back to our strength because we're going to do a tank build, of course. One I really like here is Go for Master Shelf. It allows you to make those bacon and eggs, which are really good compared to just having some grilled grilled meat, for instance. So it also allows you to do coffee and teas. So, and this is something that is really powerful for tank. It's the food 
well, the drinks and the meals. These are really good for you because it helps to keep your stamina up, helps keep your region up, and helps to just make you fight better. After this, we're going to go back and pump up strength a little bit because one of the problems is, for instance, let's say I want to do sexual T-Rex 2, I require strength level 3. Same thing for Skull Crusher, it requires strength 3. So we're going to pump that up. That's going to cost a couple of points, unfortunately, but it does mean that we have now increased. We have 220% headshot damage and a 15% greater chance to dismember. And this is really good because, again, you will be hitting and shooting uh, zombies a lot and uh, you do want to increase that chance of not just the dismemberment but also the damage that when you do headshots of course you do want to do headshots so now we're up in a view we use seven points here so the three more points to get to the first 10 points is going to be we're going to do another sexual t-rex or sorry sexual tyrannosaurus because this one reduces the stamina by 15 and power attacks by 30 but killing blows grant 10 stamina this is awesome because if you're using a sledgehammer and you're hitting them in the head chances are you're going to be killing regular zombies fairly easily by just one hitting them and if you then get 10 stamina that really helps you move around because as you know power attacks basically will stop your stamina region for a couple of seconds the next one we're going to do here is actually go into heavy armor you probably want to do either scrap armor or iron armor if you have the resource or you find it going into at least one here means that you can craft iron armor at least quality two and you have less penalty for the heavy armor movement the stamina and penalty has been reduced by five percent and improved your ability by 50 percent which means you don't have to repair it as often that's very helpful as well we're also going to go for boomstick which means that well of course we can craft the shotguns we deal more damage faster fire rate, faster reload, and we stun enemies for six seconds. And this is real helpful because we're a little bit slow in that heavy armor. We might have some stamina issues. So we definitely want to sort of keep the enemy away from us so they don't gang up on us. And it also, of course, increases the chance by dismemberment by 5%. So that's also super helpful. So now we're up to having used 10 points and that puts us at, let's have a look here um we have stamina reading is still all right not too bad the healing all that is fine of course we haven't put on any armor we haven't been using any weapons yet but you know this is how it looks it's, it's still looking pretty normal what's really going to change is as we start putting in the next 10 points so what we're going to go for is skull crusher two out of five this is just increasing the damage you can craft better sledgehammers but it increases damage and 30% chance to knock down enemies with power attacks. And you will be using power attacks fairly frequently. We're also going to go Boomstick, 2 out of 5, which again increases the damage. You can craft better, the faster reload, faster fire rate, and dismemberment chance. Always going to be helpful if you have a shotgun on you. Now we're going to go for Master Chef. The reason I want to go for Master Chef is because it allows us to craft steak and potatoes the meat stews for instance and the blueberry pies and the pumpkin pies it, it, it do cook faster but that's not much of a use but crafting steak and potatoes or meat stew etc gives you higher health re regeneration and it gives you some stamina bonus as well so that's also also something you want to go for now if you have found the recipes for some of these things you probably can skip that depending on how your looting is going it's really good if you don't find the recipes. If you do find the recipes for at least meat stew, maybe the coffee and teas, then you could consider not putting these in Master Chef because you're just gonna, it's not gonna really help. But if you don't, it, you know, I, I would definitely go for it. Uh, we're also gonna go for another point in heavy metal, heavy armor, because we have better armor, or rather it reduces the armor movement and stamina and penalty by 10% and increases the durability by 100%. Again, Let's us last longer and just mitigates a little bit of that stamina penalty that you get from wearing the heavy armor. We're then going to go back over to the fortitude and go for that pain tolerance. Reducing the HP loss 5%, it's 
is helpful, but having 20% less chance to get stunned, that is really good because getting stunned, especially if you're getting mobbed by a few zombies, can really get you killed. So now we're up to having used 15 points. We're going to go for a couple more points here because you will see if I want to go up to Skull Crusher, I need to have Strength Level 5. And it's the same for pretty much the rest of them. We need to have Attribute Strength 5. So we're going to go for up to 5 here. And you will see that now we do 240% headshot damage. Really good. 25% greater chance to dismember. That is awesome. That really, really will help us. So we're up at 5 strength. That's 5 out of 10. And this is where it starts getting it to be a little bit more expensive because it costs 2 and then it goes up to 3 towards the end. So the first 5 ones only cost 1. So those are always worthwhile to go for. We're then going to go for Sexual Tyrannosaurus for another one. Again, it reduces the stamina usage, which is going to be useful for our Sledgehammer. But... Killing blows now grants 20 stamina. And again, if we're doing our job properly, we will be killing them and getting that 20 stamina. So that's really something that's going to help you play effectively. We're also going to go for Skull Crusher 3. You'll see that now we have a 20% chance to knock down nearby enemies, which means that if you're being attacked by, let's say, 5, you hit one of them, there might be a glancing blow, but there's a 20% chance that the other foes are going to get knocked down as well. And either way, if you're power attacking, 45% on individual one. And we can now craft quality for sledgehammers. And that's good because, again, higher quality sledgehammers means more damage output. We're also going to go for boomstick number three. It increases, again, the damage. We can craft the quality four shotguns, faster fire rate, faster reload, but... The stun is now up to 8 seconds. This, again, just helps us in a situation where there's multiple. Even if there's one that is running, say, feral or radiated, it'll just keep him away from you a little bit longer. So that's going to be helpful. We now have three more points. And we're going to put that into, actually, fortitude. So a problem here. So I want to go, for instance, into healing better. I want to, instead of having one health every 90 seconds and critical injuries 20% faster, I want to basically double up to win per 45. But it requires me to have 45 fortitude level 3. So I'm going to put two points in there and then healing factor 2. Quick healer. I'm now, unfortunately, I have no more points. Pain tolerance is also good. Again, you reduce HP loss by 10% and 40% less chance to just it's done. So this is something I would consider over the next points that you have. Again, same thing with cardio that we uh, could take if we put another 42 points. It's also something that is helpful as well. So this is what we have right now. We have mostly put into all the tanky stuff and then a couple of ones, pain tolerance and healing factor is really good for tank. Cardio is always good in all situations because it just helps with your stamina recovery in general. Now, you could be arguing that other skills complement a tank build well, and that is true. And I think that further points in Fortitude, like I said, for pain tolerance and healing factor is really useful. You could, for instance, go into Perception. Penetrator could be good as well, reducing the armor uh, target armor reduction, also really helpful. A uh, demolition expert can actually look pretty good. You can craft the, the pipe pumps. That's something that I actually like to do myself. You also could consider Lucky Looter, for instance, a uh, salvage operation. If you like to go looting and scavenging a lot, that's also very helpful. Uh, agility is something that I don't normally put a lot if you're doing tanky. Parkour could be useful, saves you from having a broken leg. Running gun could be helpful because it means that your hip fire accuracy is improved and you have less movement penalty reloading because you will be reloading that shotgun fairly fairly commonly because it only has like five, six, seven, eight shots in the barrel. So putting a point or two into this actually really helps you, especially as the zombies start running go into feral. If you're doing, for instance, a lot of base building, you also want to consider advanced engineering. You now, getting that forges and stuff like that is definitely going to be 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 useful. You know, putting and uh, getting the workbench and the things like that. Better barter, maybe daring adventure to get better better loot uh, the rewards as well. Trader rewards. So it really depends on how you play. If you play a lot of traders, this might be 
useful to start putting into as well. And of course, if you're doing a lot of construction for your base building, you know, minor 6.9 and model load, it really helps with the resource gathering. And that's something that of course helps you with doing the base building. In my normal gameplay, I, I generally would spread out a little bit more, but again, it depends on what kind of build you're trying to do. Here, we're trying to do a really a combat focused tanky build, and that's why we've cut down as much as we can on these other perks that you might want to consider putting in as well. And it makes him a lot better combat. It does make him a little bit less effective when it comes to trading or building or resource uh, gathering, etc., etc. So what we're going to do here as well, we're going to be looking at our, our inventory. And of course, we're going to have a sledgehammer. We're going to have a, shunk, a pump shotgun. And we're going to have some iron armor. And again, it's all tier 4 because that's what we can be crafting. Now, as far as mods and everything, it, it really depends on what you're finding. If you can find for your sledgehammer, that burning shaft mod really going to help you. Again, it gives you light, which is useful, but also sets the enemies on fire. If you can find the ergonomic grip mod, it's really useful when it comes to reducing the melee stamina usage. And that's something that when you're using the sledgehammer special power attacks is something that's going to be something to be concerned about. But the pump shotgun, I like the, uh, the choke mods. Those are good. Of course, the tube extenders, you can actually have more shells inside. When it comes to your armor, improved fittings or even better customized fittings really do help you. The helmet light mod, really good. Bandolier helps you reload faster. Armor plating, if nothing else, gives you better armor rating. Of course, impact bracing mod reduces fall damage. This is what we look like now. Not quite the green goblin, but you know, at least there is a greenish hue that I put on the armor. It uh, doesn't really show up really well. Unfortunately, I wish the, the tints were a lot stronger, sort of like you painted them on, rather than just very, very faint tint. Uh, but you know. What can I say? But let's go and have a look here. We are now level 20, and this is what we have. We have tier four, sledgehammer, shotgun, and the armor, of course, a little close as well. Let's have a look at our characteristics here. Of course, level 20, we have 120 of health and stamina, normal. And let's go into here, our actual stats. We have a pretty good armor rating. As you can see, we are mitigating almost 50% of the damage for the five. It's not too bad also pretty resistant to explosions and somewhat to criticals now our stamina regeneration will always be an issue our attacks does mean that you do want to hit those heads and get those kills for those 20 stamina back per kill don't get caught out of having no stamina when you're in a group of zombies that's really really deadly because you move slower we do a lot of damage with the shotgun and the and the sledgehammer, which is good. and But those are really close combat weapons because the shotgun is like five meters. And of course the sledgehammer is just a meter and a half or something. But clearing out houses is gonna be really effective. And we do have to avoid getting ganged up on. And that can be a bit harder because as you can see, we have a bit of a mobility hit, so we are slower. And the area of effect of the sledgehammer really does help. The shotgun's ability to stun and slow enemies, that can be invaluable. Just make sure you alternate target rather than shooting until you get the kill. With our cooking seals, we now have pretty good drinks. We have pretty good with the teas, because you can see it gives you stamina re regeneration. Coffee is even better with stamina regeneration. This is something that you definitely want to drink as you go into battle. We also have our nice steak and potato meals, or the meat stews, which are even better. They give you a lot of food, but also give you that critical healing. And the meat stew is good because it gives you that stamina bonus, or rather the max stamina bonus, which means that we go up to 140 rather than 120. Again, every little bit helps. And overall, the tank really features heavy armor, closer combat weapons of devastating effect, but it does rely on food more than healing kits in order to regain hit points. This means that you do have to cook and bring more food that you need just from nourishment because you'll be likely using it to regain hit points in addition to that. And this is where considering putting some points into healing factor and pain tolerance really helps because you take less damage, you don't get stunned as much, and you heal faster. And this is something that especially if, and this is something that I would normally recommend doing it for a lot of classes, consider picking up a machine gun just for laying down that fire when you're getting crowds. The AK-47 or the M60 especially are awesome during blood wound halts. And actually M M60, even at range, 
with a bit of a scope is an awesome sniper weapon because it deals really good uh, damage and it's got a huge capacity of, of uh, bullets which really helps when you're getting rushed as well so putting a couple of extra points in that doesn't hurt and then you be, just means that you can put some more points into the machine gun and that's something that is I, I would say definitely recommended but how does it work in practice so first let me just I reload this one of course make sure you reload one shot useful just to take care of him now i woke some stuff up again close combat here you have one lady coming in one hit she died and this is something where the tank really excels so i'm going to spawn in some party girls here's one two four five six but yeah i'm going to hit him once and once in the face and look at my stamina it is going down but i set it on fire here flying one's always annoying let's get another hit there another hit there and another hit there but look at our stamina we are down and i've just been walking backwards a little bit i did take a little bit of damage and these were not even running so that's something you always have to take into consideration i'm gonna eat that heal up just a little bit reload my weapon of course and then let's spawn in Oh, Feral. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where backing up, using that slow and stun, you see, they're definitely slower. You knock them down, slower, dismember, and that's how it works. If you're getting a lot of Feral, you might not want to um, go just melee because, as you can see, it's really hard to take care of them fast enough. So I would definitely recommend go with that shotgun as much as you can when you're having routes. You see, I knocked them down and hope I don't bleed to death. I might. Well, let's take care of this one. We'll see if we actually die. Gonna be touch and go there. No, no, don't do it. Oh. How embarrassing. So don't forget those regular bandages as well. And I didn't have any. And I was like, one second of bleeding left. Oh, how embarrassing. But as you can see, getting ganged up on by these lovely ladies is not fun. By moving and shooting using the shotgun, you can probably do a lot better than just sledgehammer them. Because it's really tough when you get a group of zombies, even having a sledgehammer that has an area of effect. Personally, I like a more aggressive playstyle when I stream and make videos because it makes for better content. But if I play alone, I'm a lot more defensive and careful and likely do a lot more ranged combat rather than just go in noisy and heavy into danger. But what is your playstyle and what build do you love? As you can see, this tank build, while it is really effective in uh, dealing out damage, like any build, you do run into issues when you get ganged up on because even with armor rating and taking less damage, ferals just deal so much damage. And this was basically six feral party girls. And you saw they basically with that bleed, unfortunately, and not having a bandage, even though I was healing, that wasn't enough. So yeah, don't forget the bandages like I did because it doesn't matter how tanky you are, that small little paper cut can mean you're doomed. Catch you next time, Survivor. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedded community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.